Welcome to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast, hosted by author, educator, speaker, and mom, the cool cat teacher, Vicki Davis. Every weekday, Vicki and her guests will help you discover powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. In this episode, number 651, educator Noelle Pickering shares a multitude of options for launching and maintaining an online classroom. Whether you want to go live or pre-recorded, Noelle talks about some great tools and add-ons to get you started. We want to thank Advancement Courses for sponsoring this special content on education's coronavirus response. Stay tuned at the end of the show to learn about their free micro course on online learning. Let's check in with Vicki and Noelle right now. So today we're talking with Noelle Pickering, a former middle school math teacher, instructional coach, and she's online at maneuveringthemiddle.com. And she has shared some free middle school math lessons that you can take and use to teach math online. So Noel, these are such unusual times as we've been having the coronavirus crisis, you know, crossing the world, really. Um, how are you doing? Oh, thanks, Vicki. Yeah, I am doing well. My role looks a little different these days. So I've been able to support a lot of teachers um, through our website and our resources. So I'm, I'm hearing a lot of what teachers are doing in their digital classroom um, what that looks like on different campuses across the country. And so, um, yeah, it's a different, unique role that I'm in. I also am a mom, so my kids are not in school either. So I I think we're all in this new normal for at least a period of time. We are. So when we talk about middle schoolers, you know, they're beautiful. They're awesome. They like yucky stuff. You know, I heard a brain researcher talk once and say, you know, middle school puberty is basically they live bipolar, all of them. So their emotions are up, down, up, down, up, down anyway. (laughs) And we know that we have to deal with the emotion to be able to get motion in learning. Uh, What are teachers telling you as you're talking to them about emotions and and what's going well and what's not? Yeah, I think one thing that I'm hearing is just the need for that socialization that they're really missing out on, um, especially if they're you know, still at home, their their whole environment has changed. They do still have social media and things like that. But um, that face-to-face interaction with both their peers and their teachers has just really almost overnight been been removed. And so I think that is something that middle schoolers are, are naturally going to struggle with. Um, there's so much of their identity comes from those friend groups and the people that they associate with. So I definitely think that is one thing that they're seeing and really trying to address from a virtual standpoint. Well, the interesting thing, we're using Zoom and, you know, we're not doing the full amount of classroom instruction time as regular, but I've kind of almost looks like sometimes our attendance is better than it is in a physical classroom Mm -hmm. because I, I don't really like the term social distancing because it's really physical distancing. True. Socially, in some ways, we're in each other's homes. We're meeting each other's cats and dogs, hamsters. I mean, I had a big online thing with 100 high schoolers twice. So they need that socialization, don't they? Yes, yes, I agree. And and one thing I have heard, and, and it sounds like your situation is different, that schools are handling this really differently across the board. So there are some schools that are very supportive of those online um, live things like Zoom. And then there are some that are shine away from that. And so I think that's, you know, something that teachers are kind of learning to navigate as well as not only, you know, how can I provide some emotional support and just a sense of normalcy for their students um, w- within the given restrictions that their um, schools or districts may have. Well, of course, we record because it has to be synchronous and asynchronous. And a lot of my playbook comes from the book I co-wrote, Platinum Classrooms, Engaging Minds, back in 2011. I mean, it's like this is basically a big, massive global project with school. You know, we're connecting and that sort of thing. So they need socialization. Sure. If they can't connect, you know, through Zoom or WebEx or Teams or Skype or Google Hangout, all the different ways that teachers are connecting. How are you hearing that others are connecting with their kids? I'm hearing that others are just connecting kind of in a more, I guess I would say more one-on-one in the sense of using um, like a pre-recorded message, but where their face is, you know, in the camera and they're just talking to them. So it's not necessarily like a conversation, but they're at least connecting with the students. And then the students are using like a software like Flipgrid or something like that to message back. So that's kind of one way that I'm seeing teachers use technology in this, you know, can need to connect. Okay, so let's shift and talk about math. And one thing I'm recommending for our teachers is 
at least once a week, we try to do our attendance questions or mood surveys to try to understand the emotional temperature of our students. Smart. But move to math. How can we teach math online? Well, I think that there are, is a wide variety of uh, math teachers and their comfort level with technology. And, and in all honesty, you know, there are great tools out there for math, but it, it can be a little bit more cumbersome just depending on what level of math you're dealing with and the different equations and formulas. And so I think just generally teachers should kind of evaluate where they are. You know, if, if you are brand new to this, then, you know, really thinking about taking small steps towards teaching remotely and not really feeling the pressure to, you know, make this giant leap overnight. But uh, but there are some wonderful tools out there that we love to recommend. Again, there's all of the normal Google apps, and then there's just add-ons that go with it. Equatio is a really great one that works um, specifically for math, and it allows teachers to have a free license so that they can use specific, you know, higher level math symbols and equations. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great resources out there that are pre-recorded. You know, I know a lot of teachers are utilizing Khan Academy or things like that. I would just suggest if you are doing something like that to really make sure that your students are also hearing your voice. It's, it's different when they're used to seeing you every day and then they are now watching these like pre-recorded videos. So if you can, you know, as a teacher, just get your face out there and connect again, like we mentioned earlier, I think that's really valuable. And then the other thing that I think um, math teachers really can utilize is just the actual pen tools. If you're using an iPad, there's so many different stylists, things like that, so that they're able to actually see what you're doing. Teachers have gotten really creative. They're using document cameras. They're using the whiteboard feature in Zoom, Edpuzzle. There's all sorts of different things that allow you to show your work or for students to show the work and then submit it back to you. And how about assessment? What does that look like? Oh, goodness. Well, um, my favorite assessment piece is a simple Google form because it's pretty straightforward and it almost integrates with everything. But there are other things like quizzes that teachers really like because of the feedback that it provides and it's pretty streamlined. So that's one way to do that. And then the other question that has come up a lot is, at this point, depending on your circumstances, what is the goal in your assessment, if that makes sense? Like really thinking through the requirements and the expectations of your district and then what students are capable of or what technology they have and how that can work with where you're trying to go. So I definitely think for schools and teachers that maybe are are new to this, that it's going to be a big jump. But I think choosing one technology piece and kind of learning that and mastering that is going to be good for you, but also for your students. Like I think about all the students that maybe haven't been exposed to these different technology tools. And granted, middle school students are very technologically savvy, but also we're, we're talking about parents who are now a little bit more involved. I think we can be asking a lot if we weren't necessarily quite as prepared before this all went down. Okay, now I'll fill in the blank as we finish up. After this crisis passes, I hope we don't blank. Oh, I hope we don't miss out on the opportunity to, to make improvements in our education system. Like what? You know, really having a plan and being prepared. And I think sometimes in education, we just like fix the immediate issue at hand. And um, sometimes it seems like there's so many immediate issues that um, that long-term perspective can sometimes get lost in the shuffle. And I think that's kind of what I am intending when I say that. Okay. So middle school math teachers and anybody else listening, all of my love goes out to you. I'm in the same boat. I mean, I'm lead teacher with our school and we have gone completely online. This is our second week as I'm recording this. It'll probably be into our third week as this podcast goes live. But there are a lot of people sharing free resources. There are a lot of people pulling together, but you are sort of a lighthouse for your kids. So let's let's adjust. Let's um, understand these are very different times. And let's be the noble teachers. I think teachers are more noble uh, in hard times because we're so needed. So thanks, Noelle. Yes, thank you, Vicki. And I just completely echo what you just said there. Advancement Courses has a free micro course, Launching Online Learning. Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash online learning to register for this free, valuable micro course. And you can earn college credits as well. Just ask them how. Now is the time we all need to educate ourselves on effective online teaching. And Vicki recommends this course as a great and free place to start. Thank you, Advancement Courses, for sponsoring this show on such an important topic. And we'll see you next time.